Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Campus Consortium's Grand Briefing Webinar featuring 250,000 Student Engagement Mobile App Grant Awardee, Kentucky Wesleyan College. In today's presentation, Brian will share his journey on how Kentucky Wesleyan College utilized this grant and how you can apply for a similar grant. Our presenters include Mr. Brian Blunt, who is the Senior Director for Information Services and Resources for Kentucky Wesleyan College, and Mr. John Wayne Maker, Executive Director at Campus Consortium. We will take questions at the end of today's presentation that have been typed into the chat box or go to webinar control panel. Without further ado, please allow me to introduce you to Mr. Wayne Maker and Mr. Blunt. Over to you, John. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Campus Consortium Grant Webinar. I am John Wanamaker. I am the Executive Director of the Campus Consortium, and happy to be here with you today with our presenter, Brian Blount. We are excited to have Brian join us today. He's going to share with us an experience uh, that he had at his institution and his perspective on uh, how Kentucky Wesleyan utilized a $250,000 grant and how you can apply for a similar grant. Uh, Campus Consortium uh, was founded about uh, 16 years ago in 2003. It's a nonprofit organization that aims to reduce the cost of education throughout the globe. Um, we were founded with 14 universities, including the University of Montana and Case Western Reserve University. Uh, as a consortium, we now are 37,000 institutions globally. Uh, participating uh, with institutions in Southeast Asia, the United Kingdom, North America, India, and Australia. Uh, before we begin, uh, we're going to take a, just a quick look at uh, some of our sponsors and thank them for their support. So we are funded uh, by sponsors of webinars just like this one. And as you can see, some of our sponsors are Unified, uh, Quick Launch, Oracle, Black Belt Help, Salesforce. And if you are interested in participating and becoming a similar sponsor, you are welcome to do so. And we invite you to connect with us and ex uh, explore that with uh, Sharon Das, who is our co-hostess today and can be reached at sharon.das at campusconsortium.org. As you see, her email address is uh, below there in the screen. Uh, but we will also follow up with Sharon's contact information uh, when we wrap up. Uh, we're going to move on to our next slide where we're going to just highlight a couple of grant awardee institutions that we have uh, participated in addition uh, to Kentucky Wesleyan University. Um, we have a number of, of institutions across the globe who have participated uh, in the grants for different technologies serving the institution in a way that they hope to advance the digital experience for their students and their staff. And a number of our institutions um, have shared with, the, with us their feedback and have shared with us their experience in case studies and in presenting similar webinars in the way that Brian is going to be sharing today. Part of the mission of the organization and of the, the effort that the consortium makes is to provide thought leadership and best practices in a peer-to-peer -peer environment uh, so that some of our grantees, uh, wardees, are in a position to uh, walk others through the experiences they've had and help others with lessons learned and establish best practices. So we encourage our uh, wardees to participate in this way and help all of us uh, get better in the way that we aim to serve institutions and reduce the cost of college across the globe. Um, our next slide, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the, the benefits of the actual app that uh, Brian's institution uh, put into place. Uh, this mobile app had provided students with a one-stop access uh, to a number of student services, campus safety, advising needs, academics. Uh, it linked them to their finances and, and anything related to facilities. They were kept up to date on athletics other happenings on campus life, as well as in ways that they were participating in advancement. 
Uh, this was a, a, a one-stop experience for students in a way that they aim to create a similar or a seamless uh, experience with all of the applications in one place for their students on their campus. All right, a little bit about um, the uh, this actual grant. It's, it's, it covers up to $100,000 for a period of five years. Um, there, this covers licensing and hosting, as well as professional services and support costs associated with implementing the mobile app. Um, awardees are granted partial and full amounts, uh, depending on need and depending on the university's um, focus and their timelines for implementation. So each of the uh, criteria that is required is listed on the screen here, but every applicant must be an educational institution or a public sector organization. Uh, we have granted awards both in the K-12 space as well as in higher ed. Uh, the applicant needs to demonstrate a commitment to implementing the solution, uh, show support of, of the institution in the, in the form of a letter of intent from either a president or senior advisor, um, and also articulating how this uh, grant could help them uh, solve a, a problem that they're facing and how it would help them in meeting some strategic objectives of the institution. In the next slide, I want to make everyone aware of other grants we are running for the 2019 year. Uh, each of these is currently open um, and closes uh, around the same time on March 20th of this year. So you may visit our website and learn more about how to uh, register for consideration for the grant and apply for any number of these grants that are listed here. I do want to just call out that uh, while some of you have perhaps been awarded uh, a grant in the past and or have applied for others, um, you are open and welcome to continue to apply uh, for the grants that are open for 2019. So there is no limitation um, in participation based on uh, previous applications that you may have uh, placed in the past. With that said, I want to introduce Brian Blount, our speaker for today. Uh, Brian is currently the Senior Director for Information Services and Resources for Kentucky Wesleyan College. Brian serves as the Chief Information Officer, and he is responsible for leading the integration of information resources and technology activities to support the academic and operational goals of his college. Brian has 15 years experience in the education sector, and more than 20 years in analysis, programming, and IT management. Um, Brian and I were chatting before everyone joined the call today, and he shared with me that he also has a number of other extensive projects that he has led, including their CAMS Enterprise Data Conversion and an ERP implementation, and he did that in impressive record timing. Um, he's worked with dis uh, Disaster Recovery and the Business Continuity and Implementation Plan, at Kentucky Wesleyan. He's also led their LMS conversion and implementation. Uh, he implemented their unified mobile app deployment, as well as the uh, college-wide electronic records management effort, moving to a paperless infrastructure design and deployment. Brian started at Kentucky Wesleyan as a computer science analyst, and as a software information coordinator, he was responsible for providing assistance to the KWC faculty and staff in maximizing the use of the student information system, CAMS Enterprise. Prior to being a part of the Wesleyan IT staff, he functioned as a program director and, and lead teacher for a local K-12 public school district. In this position, he helped the school design and he directed uh, the district's STEM engineering program. We're thrilled to have Brian join us today and appreciate his time and appreciate everyone joining us today to learn more about the College Consortium Grant Program. With that, I'll let Brian take it away. Thanks again, uh, Brian, for being with us, and we'll let you kick it off right now. Well, John, I, I appreciate the glowing reference. I hope I'll live up to the preview you've given me. Let me get my screen up here for everyone to see.
And I'm hoping that now you guys should see a screen with a uh, nice 3D fractal image on there. And Sharon, if you guys can't see, if you'll just let me know, I'd appreciate it. You can see that, Brian. Thanks. Okay. Oh, and I, I apologize already. I'm not living up to my hype. My PowerPoint is, there we go. Somehow I put it in the wrong file folder. So I apologize for that, folks. Let me open it back up and get us onto the slide where we need to be. There we are. All right. Appreciate your patience. As John said, I'm the Chief Information Officer here at Kentucky Wesleyan College. I have been on staff going into my fifth year. I came on board as a systems analyst and programmer. The gentleman who ran our department retired about halfway through our implementation project, and I was, as my staff says, brave enough and crazy enough to go to the administration and ask for the job, and they gave it to me on a temporary basis, and I'm still here. So I do enjoy the college, and just as a Shameless plug for our city, our Convention and Visitors Bureau will love this one. Uh, geographically, Owensboro, we are located one and a half hours west of Louisville. We are an hour and a half north of Nashville and three hours east of St. Louis. We are a city of 60,000 and we are right on the bend of the Ohio River. If you do make it to this region, Owensboro, we're known for bluegrass. We have the Bluegrass Hall of Fame Museum here in town. We're also known for bourbon. We're part of the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. And we have a well-known, if you are a Food Network junkie restaurant called Moonlight Barbecue. We're also known for barbecue. And if you do make it to town, please stop by Kentucky Wesleyan. Uh, I enjoy showing off and giving tours of our campus and facilities. We do a really good job with a very small staff. So now that I've done my shameless plug, you see on the screen, we were founded in 1858. We are a four-year private faith-based liberal arts school. We do offer 29 majors. We've got 13, 13 pre-professional programs. Uh, another shout out for the college. Our accrediting body, the SACS body, has just approved the college to confer two-year associate degrees. So starting in fall of 2019, we will be offering Associates of Science and Associates of Arts degrees. We have a exponentially growing dual credit program with our two of our local high schools in the county. And our online degree program has recently been ranked the best value in the state of Kentucky. So shameless plugs aside, that's some of the background for Kentucky Wesleyan College. Now, the reason we got involved with consent, uh, Campus Consortium and the Vendor Unified, we initially, we actually have more than two mobile apps. When I came on board, we have a mobile app that is part of our student information system, CAMS Enterprise. We have a mobile app that is part of our learning management system, which is D2L Brightspace. We have an app for our admissions program, Hobson's. We have an app for Razor's Edge. We have an app for Student Life, which is Campus Labs, and the list goes on to about two or three more apps that we have, and I cannot remember them, to be honest. So we did have more than two. When we started to discuss the possibility of unifying all these applications, we sat down with Cabinet and, most importantly, with our admissions executive staff and the marketing executive staff. We determined over the course of a few meetings that we wanted a unified app that would address the needs of the student content population. We wanted the app to be able to be used by anyone who is a deposited accepted student. That means they have accounts across our platforms. We weren't really looking at changing any of the public facing marketing brands that we have. Uh, that was already well established and we've gotten good response on that. The development group, they were just bringing on their Razor's Edge NXT platform and they also felt that the constituents that they focused on, alumni, they would not benefit at the moment from having the solution we were putting forth. So we decided to go with the two major platforms that we had, the ERP and the LMS. As you see, we did need to integrate with those two. As I said a moment ago, when we had the discussions, we said at the time we were not going to focus on integrating 
the other half dozen mobile apps that we have with our different platforms. That is going to be something we look at possibly in a phase two or phase three. Right now, we are still in the project phase and we have several small products that have been part of this phase. The project phase is to completely bring into the mobile app environment all of our student information capabilities and all of our learning management system capabilities. So part of the process to finish up on this slide, the cost-effective solution, we determine that it's not so much a ROI proposition, but a value on investment proposition. The, again, the constituencies we're looking at are our accepted deposited students. These are kids and these are families that have already made a commitment to come to Kentucky Wesleyan. What we looked at was the value on investment is the fact that kids, they expect when they walk onto a campus to have a reliable Wi-Fi network. When the kids come onto campus, they want to have some type of entertainment package available. They expect that, whether it's streaming, whether it's cable, whether it's a combination. The parents, they want to be able to conduct their business anytime, anywhere, regardless of the platform being used. And you know, we all live in an Amazon world, so we know exactly the, the analogy I'm making there. With those requirements underlining and underpinning the thought process of the grant, we determined that those ideas and those needs would give us a value on investment with this mobile app. So the strategy, just like you guys, I sat through a seminar a couple years ago, listened to what Campus Consortium had to say, uh, did my research on the partner vendor, which is Unified. I liked what I read about the consortium, liked what I read about Unified. I personally completed the process. I got with our president. He filled out the executive summary. I submitted the grant application. We were approved back in November of 2017. We went live in a pilot test that spring. We were live around April of 2018 and we rolled it out officially at the start of our fall 2018 semester. So the impact on this one, we have, and I'll show you folks here on a screen in a few minutes, out of our 750 face-to-face -face students, we have 500, approximately 550 students have downloaded the app. That's a little more than 70% of our student population. Our two big interfaces, the LMS and the SIS platform, they have received close to 20,000 hits since we have gone live back in the fall. The interoper interoperability between our web and our mobile, it has been seamless. What we have done, the kids can get onto the Unified app, they can click onto the login interface, and from there it seamlessly takes them into either the LMS platform or the SIS platform. The grant, as far as reducing the cost, we are able to do more with less time. By that, I mean the kids can go on to the ERP solution. They can do all of their administrative functions that are related to the business of being a student. They can register, they can pay their bills, they can accept their financial aid, and within a few weeks, we will have a degree audit function in there so they can take their advising. All of this is able to be done through the mobile app. With our SIS capability, um, we've put out what we call a mobile computing initiative. Basically what that is between the mobile app, the SIS platform, a $20 Bluetooth keyboard, and a student's phone, they can conduct all of the academic business that is needed to successfully complete a course through their phone and through the mobile app. And by that, I mean they can read the syllabi, they can take their quizzes, they can download homework, they can complete homework, upload homework, they can do presentations, they can even do videos and asynchronous course construction, if that made any sense. But, I mean, long and short, the impact has been very positive. It has allowed us to go from a old school face-to-face -face environment where the kids sat in the classroom with a whiteboard or in one case an actual blackboard. Uh, the lecturer was in front dispensing knowledge. 
we have now been able to flip that classroom idea to where we have asynchronous learning and teaching abilities. It can be done anytime, anywhere. Oh, and by the way, I almost completely forgot, and shame on me for doing that, our online program, since they are completely dependent on our technological platforms, the online program has increased in the last two years from 20 students to almost 100 students. Now, that is not all attributed to the mobile app platform, but I can guarantee you, and I would bet a dollar in my pocket, that a large majority of our success is due in fact to the mobile app platform and the interoperability we have with the LMS system. So, let me get down to the nuts and bolts. I've been talking for a few minutes. Oh, and by the way, uh, if you folks have any questions, there's the chat section on the control panel. You know, please submit a question. I know Sharon will be looking at those, and I'll be glad to answer anything I can at the moment. If I don't know it, perhaps the consortium folks will. And if you guys would like to contact me after the seminar, you can go to our college webpage. It is www.kwc.edu. From there, we have a, a public-facing directory. My office number and email are both available. I welcome any calls or any emails. Glad to talk to you folks about the process. And by the way, I don't think I mentioned, it's a side note, but it is critically important. The process was seamless, easy, and well-managed. Between the consortium and the Partner Unified, as I said earlier, we were implemented within about a three-month time frame, and that was mainly because of the restrictions I put on to slow down a little bit. Consortium and Unified, if you have a small IT staff or basically no IT staff at all, they will lead your implementation. They will lead the production push out and make sure that what you need is in place the way that you want it done. So can't say enough about those two guys. Now, let me show you guys just for a couple minutes one of the things we have. And this is an add-on feature, but in my opinion, if you can afford to add this a la carte to your menu, it is well worth every penny. What you folks see now is a dashboard, and it is um, managed by Quickdose. Uh, the dashboard, obviously, we've got three panels here, applets that we can add. We've got this large panel in the middle, the theme manager. And then over to the right where my cursor is now, we have a mobile app emulator. So this is actually what our app looks like for the kids. I try and keep it basic. And again, this is part of the function of our phase one. We are primarily focusing on our um, ERP system. It's called, we, for the kids, it's their student portal. And in our LMS system, the product from D2L is Brightspace. So this is where most of the kids will go and where they access their platforms. I do, I will tell you right now, the emulator, I do not have the sign-on functionality enabled just for security reasons, but what happens when the students click on either Brightspace or the portal, they're brought into a single sign-in page. It's Active Directory authenticated, so once we authenticate, they log into their ERP student portal or their LMS student portal. The other applets that you guys will see pop up here again. And I don't know how I got GSU up there. But that's an interesting, hey, if technology can throw you a glitch, it will, but let's roll with the flow. What we had up there, though, there were three other applets up there, the KWC emergency, um, campus resources, news and events. Those are all applets that Unified and the consortium, they helped my guys implement and de actually design and implement those applets. And where I was going with that, just for a moment, if you pick this platform up, you can add applets they have. Looks like I've been idle for a moment, so let me log back in. There we go. Uh, and you see the login on the cryptos, it's pretty straightforward. Now, where I was going before, these applets over here, once you take this platform, you've got a library of pre-built applets. Uh, some are free, some are for cost. And one thing I would mention, if your institution does not have a well-developed ERP, or if you're looking to maybe modularize your ERP, there are several applets here, scheduling, financial aid, there's registration. 
you can pick those up a la carte. Consortium and Unified will help you configure and do the uh, data migration so that these applets can work with your core ERP system. Uh, there's also one thing that I use a lot are the templates. You can pick up various type of framework templates and then populate it with your specific code. Or if you have on staff someone who knows everything from the HTML to some of your JavaScript and Node, some React, you can come into this uh, What You See editor and just go to town with it. So really nice feature. We don't use it yet as much as we could. Uh, one last thing I would like to show you, because I've talked about, oh, there's KWC back again. Thank you, technology. The emergency, the resources, the news and events, and the settings, these are all apps that were configured for us by Unified and Consortium. One thing I do add in seasonally, I will add an extra applet or two, depending on the semester and the sports season. Uh, for example, we had shuttles that were set up during the fall, so we had a little applet for shuttles. Uh, but now back to where I was finishing up, one thing I do like about the portal are the analytics. And as I said, oh, we're up to 519, I was off. So I said 550, but we've got 519 out of 750 students have downloaded this. And you guys can see from the dashboard, you get your typical visual graphics. You also get on the top five. The menu obviously is gonna be the top hit, but then Brightspace, almost 10,500. And then our courses is the ERP system. 4,600 hits just on that. And of course, you see, once they get into the ERP, they're going right for the grades typically. The other parts of the ERP that they're accessing are the financial aid, accept decline, and registration. So, if I were to summarize it up, and I think I need to, because we've been talking close to about half an hour now. If you are considering the grant, I would highly recommend doing it. It is a investment, perhaps not a cost. The investment is, for us, it was more of a value on the investment than the return on the investment. Because, you know, we are outlaying some cash for it, but the expectations of students and for our phase two, we're going to be adding some parent applets into this one. These are fundamental technology pieces that our constituents expect. So we are delivering that and it's adding value to our college. The design and implementation process, they will go as fast as you will allow them to go. So you can be implemented within a matter of six weeks, or if you need to go at a slower pace because of staff demands, you can be implemented in six months. Once you are implemented, I did not mention this, the support is also very well done. Um, I have, when I have been working on a couple of our custom applets, run across some coding errors, I've contacted the unified folks who are the partner vendor, shown them the code I'm having trouble with. They have dedicated an engineer programmer to help us go through the code and correct it. So they don't just implement and leave you, they implement and support you also. So with that said, I'll take a breath. I will pass this back, Sharon. Um, I'm assuming I probably need to pass this one back to you, Sharon. Uh, yes, I'll pass that right now. I'll keep that. Great. Just give me a moment. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes. So we'll be taking up questions right now, Brian. Okay. John, are you there? I am here. Thank you, Brian. Thanks so much. Very nice job. Thank you for taking us through your journey and sharing your experience with us. Uh, we do have a couple of questions that have come in during our call and hoping that you can uh, take a few minutes to talk about those. So our first question here is, uh, what are some of the third party applications that can integrate with this platform? Well, I can answer a few of those for the question. Um, all of your major ERP systems, you've got your the Genza Bars, Campus Works, Campus View, Lucian, they all integrate seamlessly with it. They work with us. And ERP we have is from Unit 4. So it's not one of your largest vendors. They integrated with that one. Um, E2L, Canvas, Blackboard, those integrate. As far as the non administrative, 
platforms. John, you might have a better answer on that one right now. Okay, very good. Um, I do not have any more to add. I'm not familiar with uh, that platform, but I uh, will ask another question that has come in. Uh, we have some questions specifically about the grant. What happens after the, the five-year grant term ends at your institution? Now, if that's for me, the, the idea of that institution, yes, the grant does run for five years at that time, the cost of the platform will fall back to the university, actually, or to the college in our case. We plan on, at the end of the five years, keeping this implemented and keeping it live. We've already made this, demonstrated the value of the investment. We have 70% of our kids within a semester and a half use this on a regular basis. You know, part of making it a integral part of your campus Make sure you work with your constituents from the administration through the students to put into place what they need in that app so that, first of all, they can do their business. And then second of all, you know, so that they can socialize and they can use it for personal, personal reasons. That would be my suggestion on how to keep this grant going at your institution after the five years. Make it in the Very good. And a lot I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, I've got one more question that's come in, Sharon, and it's along those similar lines that Brian was speaking about regarding students. There's a question about what kind of feedback have you received from students and faculty provided since having this tool? And I think you also mentioned uh, that some parents are some of the stakeholders uh, you aim to reach as well. Can you comment on some of the feedback you've received from those folks, Brian? Yeah, certainly. Uh, and we've got three constituent groups. The first one, our student group, that is basically, I've said the phases before. Our phase one focus has been on the student experience. And just as a side note, I have a professional staff of five, including myself. I have 13 total on my staff. The other eight are part-time tier one help desk workers, and they are all student workers. So one of the jobs they do every day that they're on shift, they pull the app up and make sure the functionality is online and working the way it does. I ask them for feedback. We've done some student surveys. Overall, the experience has been very positive. The applets that we have put in place, the ERP and the LMS system, the kids use it. I can see that from the analytics going into classes occasionally. I've, I've seen kids with their phones up, taking notes, doing the work in, of the class on their phone through the mobile app. The faculty, they have sat, I go to faculty meetings regularly to get input and one of the requests they have made on a fairly regular basis is to get degree audit onto the app so that they can do some of their advising functions anywhere, anytime. The parents, we've not presented to them the mobile app except in context of student features, but we will be doing that in our uh, big spring student rushes when the parents are here on campus. I'm going to solicit feedback from them to see what they would like. My initial thought and suspicion on this one is that they would like to be able to do some of their bill paying functions through the mobile app. But that's how we're integrating with our three constituent groups right now. Very good. Brian, we have a question about implementation and what was the required timing for for your team. Uh, John, you broke up on that one. I think you're asking about a time frame for implementation. That's right. Okay. Well, from um, y'all's end of it, John, you know, Campus Consortium and Unified, you guys had the ability to get us implemented in a six weeks or under time frame. We stretched that out a little bit just for staffing reasons. We had a couple of other um, products that were being rolled out and we had one strategic project that was being wrapped up. So I just could not dedicate the actual hours to get, you know, and on our part, it was fairly easy. Whether they were, you guys were asking for standard input, um, server information, quite listing some IP addresses. We were looking for API connectors and endpoints. So it was standard infrastructure information that my infrastructure director was able to provide. For the implementation, again, you guys, basically led the charge on that where my staff only needed to test and debug what you guys put in place for us.
Very good. Thank you for that. Okay, it looks like we've got a couple other questions coming in um, that look like they're for me, but there is one more for you, Brian, that I think uh, okay. would be cool to get your answer. Um, is the app iOS, is it app iOS compatible? Yes. Uh, I didn't show it on the screen because I've, I've got to be honest, my bias lies toward Android and Microsoft, but it is iOS compatible. And if I broke down the um, specifics on that, 519 of downloads, it's about 80% iOS and the other 20 for Android. So I guess it functions extremely well on Apple platforms as well as PC platforms. Oh, one note, um, I will say this one, and you guys do put this in your documentation as part of the implementation. For the iOS platform, the school will have to register for a free Apple developer license. Brian, can you repeat that? I just want to make sure that everybody heard that it broke up a little bit. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, let me just summarize that one. The app is iOS and Android compatible. In fact, most of our students, we have 80% of our downloads are iOS devices, phones and iPads. One note, if, when you guys do implement, your institution will have to request a free Apple developer license. You have to have that in order to have this app pushed out to the Apple Store. But again, it is free, so no cost at all, no problem. It takes 15 minutes to register and get the uh, Apple developer license. Very good, thank you. Yep. Okay, so we have a couple questions coming in about uh, this one specifically, Brian says, you worked with Unified to merge two existing applications. Can this grant be used to acquire systems like Campus Labs. And then another question asking, okay. is tied to a specific platform needing to be used for the app? Uh, these are very similar and the questions that I can answer in the first piece in that um, we do have technology partners who support consortium, who support events like this, and who are our sponsors in the way that we are able to uh, advance grants and award grants. Uh, we do accept other technology uh, partners, and there is a place on our website where uh, we ask for those to be, uh, to, for those technology partners to apply. But if you have others, part of the application grant process is to share the information that you have um, about other providers and to give us background on their technical capabilities um, and how you see working with them. So that is a part of the process that is evaluated in the grant application and in the review, and we will welcome those uh, from you and from other technology partners. Um, Sharon, are there any other questions uh, from the audience today? And is the, Brian, is there anything else you wanted to add? Uh, from my end, I've, I've enjoyed the partnership. And, uh, I will tell anybody who calls up to seriously look at getting the grant and working with you guys and with Unified and the other platform partners you guys have. It's been a pleasure. That's great. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. Uh, all right. Uh, Sharon, were there any other questions in, your, or in, in the chat? Uh, John, I think we are done for today. And if at all there are more questions, I'm going to go ahead and answer each of them in the thank you mails that we send out to everyone. Very good, that's helpful, thank you. And we will be following up. Uh, we wrap up this conversation with uh, contact information for Brian, uh, for Sharon, if you all are interested in becoming a partner, as well as uh, any information you need about upcoming grants that are open. Uh, again, we have several between now and March 20th of this year. So we'll be following up with those details and you can see a list of those different grants that are available um, on the screen right now. So you're welcome to apply for any and or all of those uh, just because you may have applied or may have uh, been awarded in the past. It does not preclude you from applying for others that are open now between now and March 20th. And with that, I will turn it back over to Sharon and we'll thank all of you for joining us today. We do want to call out that we do have a Campus Consortium Ed Talk uh, coming up on March 19th. 
we will be learning from Jonathan Burdick from uh, the University of Rochester. He's Dean of Admissions and Financial Aid, and he will shed various aspects, he'll shed light on various aspects of enriching the enrollment experience. So we're excited to hear this uh, Ed talk coming up, and we thank our sponsors for yet again another talk effort that we're making to uh, share with the community the impact that technology is having on the campus experience and how we're working together to reduce the cost of college across the globe. Thanks very much for your time today and for joining us in this conversation. Brian, and thank you for your excellent briefing and for sharing with us your journey. Appreciate your support and wish you the best of luck. Thank you, everyone.